The last learning objective of this module is defining a developable surface and relating it to geographical projections. So what is a geographic projection um, or a map projection? It's a systematic rendering of locations uh, from the curved surface of the earth onto a flat map surface. So in simple words, if I have a spheroid here and I'm interested in putting all of these points on the surface onto a flat sheet of paper, I do it using geographic projection or map projection. Um, and I found this very interesting picture. Um, this is a pile of rubbish, but it's put it in put in such a way that when you put a source of light on this side, its projection on the wall is an interesting uh, picture of two people uh, sitting and drinking. Um, so this is projection. Now, this in, in geogra the geographic projection is done through what we call developable surfaces. A surface that can be made flat by cutting along a certain line and unrolling it is called a developable surface. Um, there are two commonly used developable surfaces. One is a cylinder and the other one is a cone. So if we take the cylinder and we cut a straight line um, along this dotted uh, point and, and then unfold it, it becomes a flat surface or a plane. Similarly, if we take this cone, also you can call it a party hat, and, and this is actually how you make a party hat. If you cut along this line and you unfold it, it becomes a flat surface. And both of these developable surfaces can be used for geographic projections. And um, basically the idea behind map projection or uh, uh, geographic projection um, is that we place the light source on one side of the earth and the developable surface on the other side of the earth. And as the light rays pass through the earth and project a point on the developable surface, it renders all of the points on the surface as a map on the flat surface. And through that process, we get the points of the earth mapped onto a flat surface. So there are many types of projections that you come across and sometimes actually um, there are so many that they become confusing. I'm, try I'm gonna try to simplify them so that when you come across a map projection in your ev in your in your um, everyday dealings with maps, at least you can infer from the name what does it mean. So the first map projection uh, typification is based on what surface or what developable surface was used. So it can be a cylindrical. So if a cylinder was used to create a projected map, um, it can be a conical if a cone was used. Or it can be a planar, which means a tangent plane was placed on the surface of the Earth and the image was projected. The other uh, type can be based on the placement of the surface. So if the surface is just barely touching the surface of the Earth, then it's tangential. And so it's called the tangential uh, projection. But if it actually crosses the surface of the Earth, then it's called a secant uh, projection. And wherever it actually intersects, um, or is uh, wherever it's tangent, or wherever it intersects the Earth, it's called a standard parallel, or uh, in, if it was a meridian, it would be called the central meridian. Um, the other uh, classification is based upon the orientation of the surface. So if we, if the surface um, is touching the, um, the, the, if this was tangent, if it was tangential along the equator, then it will be called equatorial. But if it was um, tangential along a meridian, then it will be called transverse. Um, and any other orientation will be called oblique. And the same thing applies to if we were using a conical uh, developable surface. So three orientations, equatorial, a transverse, and oblique. The next classification is based upon where did you put the light source. And there are three types. 
One is called central or nomic, a stereographic, and an orthographic. So central, as the name indicates, you're putting the light source at the center of the Earth. In case of stereographic, you're putting the light so source at the opposite end of the Earth, also called the antipode. And in case of orthographic, you're putting the light source at infinity. So in case of orthographic, the, all the light rays are parallel um, to each other. And um, um, the last classification is based upon what kind of distortion uh, you're achieving from a map, map projection. So conformal or orthomorphic projection is the one that preserves the shape of the uh, the objects or shape of the regions on the surface of the earth. So if I place a circle on the place on the earth and then project it, it is still circle and it doesn't become an ellipse. And if it stays circle, it's called conformal. The other one is called equidistant, which means it preserves scale or distances. Um, azimuthal, which means it preserves directions. Um, and the last one is equal area, which means it preserves the area of a region. So all of these types of projections have their um, advantages and disadvantages. And primarily what their advantages are, what is preserved when we do that, perform that projection. And some projections um, preserve the shape, whereas the others will preserve distances. And usually the name will indicate um, the, the, uh, the characteristics of the projection. So what are some of the common projections? The two projections that you will probably come across most frequently are the Lambert conformal conic projection. So um, as I mentioned earlier, this is, um, was created by Lambert. It's conformal, which means it preserves shapes. It's a conic, which means a cone was used, um, and something not in the name, but it's a secant, uh, but it can be tangential as well. It has two standard uh, parallels, and that's how the projection on a plane surface is done. The other one is called transverse Mercator projection, and the one that you're more familiar with is probably UTM, the Universal Transverse Mercator projection. And in this case, we use um, a, a cylinder in a, a on a, a which is along a tangent and a transverse orientation and that gives us the transverse mercator projection um, the particular type of pro mercator projection which is the UTM it's it the, basically it's um, is this idea extended um, to various parts of the world so all um, the longitudes Along the longitudes, we have 60 north and 60 south zones, and each zone is six degrees wide, and um, and and then and and they're named based upon um, their location. So um, this is one, two, one north, two north, three north, um, and they're, they're sequentially uh, one south, two south, three south um, zones. And if each zone has its own local Cartesian coordinate system uh, with meters as units that we use to locate. Um, if you look at the US in particular, we cover zone 10 north to 19 north um, and then um, um, part of it as um, 19 south. Uh, uh, 10 south to 19 now south as we go southwards um, but of particular interest is um, the uh, Nevada which is zone uh, 11 north you'll probably come across this with various data sets in the labs um, how do we determine the coordinates in UTM so if you are in north or south zones, the, the system of the, the coordinates is a little bit different. And the difference is potentially where the origin of the coordinates is. If in, in the north zone, the origin here marked as plus is um, at the equator for the y-axis. And for the x-direction, it's um, 5 
100,000 meters west of the central meridian. So the central meridian, as I mentioned, is where the uh, cylinder is tangent to the surface of the Earth. Now, if you are in the southern zone, then the um, origin is, um, again, uh, 500,000 west of the central meridian for x-axis. But for y-axis, it's not at the equator, but 10 million meters uh, south of the equator. So it's basically um, um, uh, when you look at the equator itself, the equator will be 10 million um, um, along the y-axis. The coordinates of equator will be 10 million meters from the origin along the y-axis. I hope that makes sense. Um, so uh, this is how we measure the, the distances um, along the north, northing, and along the east, easting in UTM. Now I want to cover one more coordinate system that is called the state plane coordinate system. And this is a, a legacy coordinate system. This is prevailing in a lot of agencies. And um, even now, a lot of um, uh, public lands are, are um, determined by this coordinate system. It has 124 geographic zones. Um, and they basically are covered by local states and local agencies. And um, they were done using surveying, and each zone um, has its own coordinate system. It uses public land survey system, um, which is six mile by six mile township. Each township has 36 sections, and each section can have four or 16 subsections. So these are all the state plain zones. And then this is, these are townships, sections, and subsections. Um, and the last thing I want to cover is map transformation. We can go from one map to the other map. So we, if we have projection and we want to go to the other projection, we can use map transformation, which is potentially a mathematical equation that takes us from one to the other. Um, in, we use ground control points, which are the points known in both maps, and we use those locations to find these parameters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and use those to then map all the other points. We can do higher order polynomials. This is an affine transform, but the higher order polynomials um, reduce the error, but they start to stretch the maps, and the error is typically measured using root mean squared error. Uh, if we have both the maps in the same datum, it's a straightforward projection, but if the two maps are in different datums, then we can't just use this equation. We have to first fix the datum and then go back and fix the projections, um, which is, in our case, it'll, it, it's typically handled automatically by the software, but it's still good to know how it is done.